Recently, I played through Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. What do you mean the wrong one? Doesn't the new one crash every five minutes? So then they won't really know if this is the new one or not, will they? It's got pretty graphics and muscly men doing action things. It's basically the same game. It's insane that they decided to name a new game the same as one from 13 years ago. Wow, I bet there's kids playing the new Modern Warfare who were born after the original. Bet that'll make you feel old. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. The game begins with a really vague montage recapping the events of the first game, because this is the first Call of Duty where you actually needed to have played a previous one to understand the plot. Which of course everyone already had in 2009, because Modern Warfare was to Call of Duty like sliced bread was to bread. Then we cut to five years later, except it's just a monologue by Specific Sheepman about how Russia is bad, MK, which we already knew because we live in 2022 and Russia is still trying to invade Ukraine. Then we cut to, oh, thank god these load screens aren't ear bleedingly loud. Now we're playing as Who Cares, generic character whose face we never see, whose only purpose is to pretend to be a bad guy until he's sold out to the real bad guys by the good guy who's actually a bad guy. Still following? Don't worry, I'll go over that again when we get to that. We go through basic training to impress Sergeant Sound Design, who sends us to go see a specific sheep man who we shoot in the face. But unfortunately, he recovers because his only weakness is small knives. So maybe his real name is Andrew Garfield. We practice our fruit killing skills, and I set the difficulty to recruit because Call of Duty on a harder difficulty is just as much fun as ripping off fingernails. And then we watch some guy fall over. For some reason. Specific sheep man lets us know that he voted for George Bush. Either of them. And hypes us up to murder some locals, and then we wait awkwardly as the game finishes loading. We're driven into the level by our Uber driver, but he gets hit by a rocket and we fall out. Two stars. We suffer through frame blending land, Call of Duty's favorite stupid post-processing effect that they overuse the hell out of in the early games. But Specific Sheep Man doesn't like that we're taking a nap, so he shoves us back into the game where we stand in one place and just shoot at things vaguely across a river, which is of course very engaging and skillful gameplay. The game eventually lets us move on to our next objective, where we hop into our backup Uber and watch a building get unbuilt, and then I gun down a civilian, which the game doesn't like, which is a reminder that this game isn't realistic, because when did the US military ever care about civilian casualties in the Middle East? We get asked nicely by the local homeowners association to drive somewhere else, because our vehicles are noisy, but we're American and revving a loud engine to annoy everyone else is our god-given right. So they send us to frame blending land again and we exercise our other god-given right to shoot up a school. This is the American way. We meet up with Specific Sheep Man and get to the chopper where we have a teenage girl slumber party with him and get a makeover to look like a Russian terrorist so we can try to join the Russian terrorist fraternity where they do American activities like committing a mass shooting. Cut to two dudes chilling on a cliff five feet apart because they're not gay, but Don't Drop tells us that our departmentally mandated 15 minute break is now over. So we jump off the cliff because death is a preferable alternative to working minimum wage. Why is that an option? Lord! <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to climb, which I actually did with no problem, which is weird because I really struggled with the exact same thing in Wolfenstein the Old Blood. Maybe I'm getting smarter. We almost fall to our death, but don't drop, make sure we don't drop, and then we get out our pussy ass heartbeat monitors on our guns because we're special ops douchebags. And then I immediately fail stealth, so maybe I'm not actually getting any smarter. We go inside and grow an extra pair of arms to grab specific sheep man's porn stash. That's stash like a collection of porn and not stash like mustache and then immediately disregard Don't Drop's orders, confirming that I am definitely not getting any smarter. We set off the fireworks display to woo the locals, but they're not as into celebrating veterans by using explosives as we are, so we exit the base and borrow a snowmobile that I am an expert driver with. This section is actually nice because there's not an excessive amount of screen shake, and I get to keep my field of view, which is a concept that other games still struggle with. And now it's time for everyone's favorite mission, the one that sold this game back in 2009, because it's all shock value and really not that interesting from a gameplay perspective. If you're familiar with this channel, you'll know that I was a perfect angel and didn't shoot any civilians. Yeah, right. Like, that's ever gonna happen. This is what happens to tax evaders. <laughs> yeah, everybody here was evading taxes. That's why they're at the airport. No, they're on their way to the tax evasion conference. <laughs> <laughs> what the? What the? What the? Are they shooting me? You walked you in front of them. Of, so I can't shoot them, but they can shoot me? It's not fair. You just, did anyone see the grenade that Will shot bounce yeah. off the ground, hit the airplane, then bounce and just hit the dude in the nut? Turns out Macaroni knew we were an American spy because, uh, well, the game never really touches on how he knows. Oh, right, we get shot and die or whatever. Rest in peace, who cares? Wait a second, how does this plan work? Alan was dressed up like a Russian. He's, like, fully tatted out to look like a Russian gangster or whatever. How do the people that recovered his body jump to the conclusion that he was an American? It's not like his blood is made of cheeseburgers. And then we're sent on a mission to find proof that Macaroni is the real bad guy, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but we'll get to that, too. No! I don't want to go to Brazil! No! Ah! <clears throat> We're in the middle of taking an Uber to get to our hotel, but the Uber driver gets shot in the face, so we have to get out and walk the rest of the way. 
two stars. We capture a random guy who is running away and torture him because Call of Duty wants you to know that torture is okay as long as you get useful information out of it. So don't drop sends us off to run through the favelas and kill the poor people living there because he's classist and also doesn't speak Portuguese. Don't drop drops on the guy we were sent to capture and we ask for an Uber driver, but they can't send one right now because the police have set up roadblocks to investigate the mass shooting of a bunch of civilians, but we'll never know who did that. And now we're playing as Ramirez, who the game will constantly remind you that you're playing because they say his name at least once every 30 seconds. Ramirez! Our Uber driver tries to drop us off at our house, but we get blown up as we step out of the car because he tried to park in the middle of the road instead of at the curb. Two stars. The homeowners association isn't happy that we decided to paint our house the wrong shade of eggshell and let our grass grow half an inch too tall, so they send their death squad to remove us from the neighborhood. Private Morgan. Well, at least we know he survives. Come on, nobody. Nobody's gonna ask. What? You have to finish my stupid joke. Why does he huh? survive? Because he becomes a captain. Oh, oh. Captain McMahon. Uh, what? I don't know. Captain Morgan. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking something else. What are you talking about? You're making my joke know. even less funny. It wasn't funny to begin with. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to order uh, some cigarettes. <laughs> Let's order some cigarettes. I don't know. I've never, <laughs> I've never smoked. No, that's what you do. Look, no, it's, it's not. Order now. That's what you do. You don't, you don't place an order for cigarettes. I, I like uh, two number nines. Shit, there's no number nine on the list. Joke's dead. Moving on. Ramirez. 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 And I put. Well, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> hey, do you like love... frame blending? Fuck you! If you don't get a 360 no scope off the top of the roof, I'm gonna be sad. All right, hang on. MLG Mountain. You might need to raise your. <laughs> <laughs> oh! 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 my God! Mom! All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> like that. Will oh, wait, I'm reloading. Oh, hang on, hang on, I'm reloading. Hey, it's cool, it's cool, it's stall, 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 yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Woohoo! Yeah. That was a missile. <laughs> he said get off the roof. Dead. <laughs> Lastimosa. 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 Yeah, you, you know what's Lastimosa. funny is, it's it's probably named after the exact same dude from Titanfall because they worked on this game. Here comes the sun. Tally will never know. I can't what? survive! 360! Fuck. Taco. Taco Togo? Taco to go. <laughs> Taco Togo. Ramirez! Shut up, Foley. I know your whole thing Ramirez. is making noise, Ramirez. but shut the fuck up. Oh, oh, Will, that was you. Will, that was you. That was me. <laughs> you hit yourself. After finishing our average day in America, we go back to Gary and Don't Drop, who says that he knows where we can find an Uber. So we ring up our cousin and then run through the entire level, because as long as you don't die, you can ignore literally everything that's going on. Unfortunately, poor people don't like helicopters, so they shoot it away and we fail a jump, except that was actually what we were supposed to do. So we mirror's edge our way back to the Uber and then hang off a ladder and fly into the sunset. How did our Uber get here so quickly? And now we're back to Ramirez, which we know because they won't stop telling us. General Shepard gives us a call and tells us that he's got a super secret mission for us after we complete our current goal of removing loiterers from the public park. And then Specific Sheepman takes over the call and lets us know that our secret mission is to mess with one of his neighbors. So we run into his house and pull an epic prank, but it turns out the guy was murdered, so he didn't really get to appreciate our prank. And now we're back to Gary and Don't Drop, who are invading oil rigs to claim them for the United States, because that's what we do. We recreate that scene from Metal Gear Solid, and we ask some new friends if they want to go swimming, but they don't really want to, so we just let them go and they descend to the next plane of existence. We open several doors in slow motion and revoke some head privileges before making a trap with serious putty that we fail to utilize because my head's too fat to hide. And then we open another door and shoot a rocket into it, which was definitely the right thing to do, and then we moved on to the next section. After taking an Uber and getting a new gun, we head to the gulag to pick up a prisoner, and I find out that all my friends are even stupider than I am. I'm gonna be straight honest, but like I knew the underground was the same as the mission, but I didn't realize that the top in Warzone is the same as the gulag. Wait, it is? You mean... The gulag like gulag in warzone like the actual building which is called prison i think is the same building and my brain just never put the two together yeah because it's the the gulag is a real thing no i know 
Oh god! This is not gonna work. Okay, never mind. Yep. I yeah, missed! Okay. You oh, missed! missed. <laughs> it didn't even hit the wall behind! That was the worst rocket shot I've ever seen! Wait, this one already is prison, right? Yes! Yeah. Yes, yes it's the Did Gulag! The realize? Gulag is a real building! Wait, is this the Gulag? Anthony, shut the fuck up! Yeah. <laughs> no! Wait, I'm dead! I just realized this is like the same map! Anthony, shut the fuck up! <laughs> what? You are now person number three to realize. <laughs> wow, the here? gulag looks like the gulag. The gulag is a real <laughs> fucking building. Of course, it looks like the gulag. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking I Christ! Got here. I just got here. I didn't know where we were. What the fuck? <laughs> We invent a hole in the wall and find the prisoner, who turns out to be our best friend Bob Barker's game show, who shows his affection by committing domestic violence. So don't drop spawns in to reward his behavior with a new gun. Unfortunately for us, the US Navy doesn't like British people, so they try to kill us and we experience some minor head trauma, and we zip line away and then get turned into a rotisserie chicken, but that's okay, we'll recover. And now we're back to playing as Ramirez. And we listen to Sergeant Sound Design have a chat with General Shepard as we take a casual jog to the Department of Commerce so we can buy some time for the evacuation. We run to a gunner section, and I'm not really sure if I actually hit anything or not because everything is really hard to see and shooting the gun causes major screen tearing, but the game continues on, so it must be fine. Our Uber driver gets shot down because it's a helicopter in a Call of Duty game, so it's contractually obligated to do so, but I'm still giving it two stars. Bob Barker's game show lets Specific Sheep Man know that he's going to steal a submarine and launch a nuke to stop the invasion of the US, but Specific Sheep Man doesn't want that, so Bob Barker's game show hangs up on him so he can do it anyways. Someone says throws a mag with 19 rounds to still have. Yeah, well, see, the fun thing is, in Call of Duty, you don't lose the bullets, so there's no reason not to reload. You, no, you just put that mag back in your pocket to use later. I just hope you grow more bullets. There are games where you, if, like, you reload a half mag, you'll get that half mag later. With Call of Duty, you just amalgamate bullets back into a full mag. <laughs> I like to think that there's a little gremlin that picks like up all the old molds and puts it into fresh mags. The little ammo gremlin? Yeah, like, little like ammo goblin. I call him Heckler. Because you store him next to your cock. Heckler's Good, you got, the, you got the fucking joke. Good job. Wait, what was the joke? It's a gun manufacturer. Yeah. Heckler and Kosh? Oh, yeah. Oh, so oh, people oh, mispronounce it to Heckler and Kosh. See, I get it, but like, every, any, like, I've n always known it's caught Heckler and Kosh. Only a simpleton oh, would call it Kosh. Coke. We run through a town and wait for Bob Barker's game show to catch up because he's a slow old man. And we check our laptop to see what new comments are being left on videos. Turns out Bob Barker's game show didn't tell anyone else his plan, so he fires a nuke at the United States by himself somehow. And there's absolutely nothing anyone can do about this, which is too bad. I mean, it's a real shame the US doesn't have any countermeasures whatsoever designed for this specific scenario. We cut back to Ramirez. <laughs> And Sergeant Sound Design tells us to make our ammo count, so we definitely do, and then cut to Call of Duty Ghosts, where we watch the nuke go off in orbit and then throw us away to our death, but that's okay because we got to be part of the trolley problem before we died. Then we watch a bunch of helicopters fall out of the sky and explode, because everyone knows there's no safety measures in place for the pilots to be able to land when the power cuts off and the rotors will just immediately stop spinning so you drop like a rock. And unfortunately, helicopters are designed to be as explosive as possible to make sure you don't walk away from the crash. We walk down the street and enter an office to let everyone know that they're being laid off for trying to work overtime. UNIONS! UNIONS! This is what Starbucks is doing right now! And then take a shortcut through the sewers to Whiskey Hotel, which we find out is actually the White House and not a hotel full of booze, which is really disappointing. We assume our role as the president and give a speech and fire our cabinet, and then cut to... Oh no... Wait, it's the Coxus Mountains! The Coxus Mountains! Sus Mountains! It's the, it's the Coxus Sus. Mountains! Oh no. Sus mountain. Now we're playing as Gary again, and we get stuck between a rock and a hard place for a sec before being ambushed by evil frisbees that send us to frame blending land. So we take out our frustration on Bigfoot hunters and check into our Airbnb, but it turns out someone else was already vacationing there, so we ask them nicely to check out and then get settled in. Regroup on me. <laughs> Specific Sheet Man lets us know that we need to download the previous tourist's porn stash onto our hard drive, but unfortunately the hard drive we're using is from 2009, so it's awful. So we greet the neighbors while we wait. We bring our hard drive to Specific Sheet Man, who rewards us by giving us a break and tucking us in for a nap, and make sure that we're going to be warm for the rest of our lives. And then we cut to Don't Drop, who runs to his Uber while we listen to Bob Barker's game show Make a Deal with Macaroni, which I'm pretty sure is a different game show. Our Uber driver gets shot and dies, so we have to manually drive it in the back of the plane. 
two stars. Don't Drop asks Bob Barker's game show a question and he starts monologuing because he's definitely in a sane mindset, so we trust him implicitly and then wait for another awkwardly long load screen. We come across some hikers and send them to sleep because we're Mr. Sandman, and then we recreate the scene from the first Iron Man, except without the Iron Man suit because we can't risk a copyright strike from Disney. Specific Sheep Man has a really intense birthday party with his friends, but we weren't invited, so we murder them for being inconsiderate, and then take a boat to go river rafting, but Bob Barker's game show decides he's not having fun and asks us to turn around. But we're committed to the activity, so we fall off the waterfall and die, and that's the end of the game. But then there's more. We catch up to Specific Sheep Man, who gives us a new orifice and monologues at us, which is the perfect time for us to talk about his plan. Shepard's plan was to start World War III with Russia, because of the nuke that Makarov set up in the first game. At this point, we don't actually know it was Makarov that set off the nuke, but we'll skip past that. Russia gets their hands on an ACS module, which is just the MacGuffin that'll later allow them to invade the US without being detected on radar, and uh, how did they get that? It's part of a downed US satellite. Did Shepard orchestrate for the satellite to go down in Russia so that they could get that, or did he just come up with his plan after he found out that Russia got their hands on the ACS module? Because he preps Alan to infiltrate Makarov's terrorist cell before they retrieve the ACS module. So did he even expect the module to get recovered in the first place? So Shepard's plan is to have Private Allen infiltrate Makarov's terrorist cell, have his identity exposed, and then get killed after the terrorist attack on the Russian airport in order for the Russians to have an excuse to go to war with America. So alright, we can assume Shepard leaked the information that Allen was an American to Makarov, and probably the Russian authorities as well, so that he can orchestrate the beginning of World War III. Then Shepard sends Task Force 141 to Brazil to find evidence that Makarov was behind the terrorist attack, which is where this plan starts to lose me. So the entire reason Shepard wants to start World War III is because of the nuclear attack in the first game. He recognizes it's a black eye to America, and he wants to start a war to prove American superiority and go down in history as the general that spearheaded it all, so he wouldn't be known as the guy that lost 30,000 men to a nuke. But then he also wants to take down Makarov and get the glory for uncovering a terrorist conspiracy for starting World War III, except he has no incriminating evidence until after the plan is already set in motion. Why did he enable Makarov in the first place if he had no evidence? Was he that fucking stupid and arrogant that he believed he could gather enough actionable evidence against Makarov in a race against the clock in order to take him down and get the glory? Hell, Shepard only gets a chance to go after Makarov himself after Price temporarily halts the fighting in the US with a nuke, which was not at all part of Shepard's plan. He explicitly doesn't want that to happen, but still benefits from the decision. In fact, he probably benefited more from the nuke going off than if it hadn't happened, because then the government gives him a blank check to hunt down Makarov. Speaking of Price, why did Shepard launch a mission to go and rescue him at all? We find out that he's Makarov's number one enemy, but Shepard didn't really need Price to take out Makarov, right? He's got the evidence he needed that Makarov was behind the attack in Brazil, and I'm assuming Shadow Company was created specifically to take down Makarov. The only information he really needed to cement his takedown of Makarov was the operations details that Roach finds and brings to him, and that doesn't involve Price at all. Well, he sends Price and Soap somewhere else to look for the intel, but he could have sent anyone. Price doesn't provide any benefit to Shepard unless everyone is really convinced that Price is a that much of a badass that they couldn't have anyone else go after Makarov. He doesn't know anything that would be worth rescuing him. Was the plan to save Price so that he would draw out Makarov? Because that doesn't happen. Is Shepard that much of an arrogant dumbass that he thinks Makarov is also an arrogant dumbass and would abandon his plans to go after Price? Speaking of which, this brings up another question I have about the campaign. In the Gulag mission, the Navy decides they're tired of waiting on Task Force 141 to save Price and they open fire on the prison early. Was there some other plan that they were part of that they wanted to get done, or were they really just that impatient that they had to destroy the Gulag early against the orders of a four-star general. Or if we go with the other option, that General Shepard ordered them to destroy the Gulag early and was lying to Task Force 141, why bother going to the Gulag at all? Price was never going to get out otherwise. Is Shepard that much of an arrogant dumbass that he just had to eliminate Price himself and tried to kill two birds with one stone by getting rid of 141 there too? And if that's the case, was Shepard actually trying to get rid of Task Force 141 the entire game? Because when they go to Brazil, they get denied exfiltration and have to call Nikolai. Was that actually Shepard denying them a way out and hoping they'd die there? If that's the case, then the entire campaign is like a comedy sketch, where Shepard is trying to break up with Task Force 141 and they just can't take a hint until he openly tries to murder them. So Shepard's entire plan is all over the place, and the biggest hurdle is solved by Price ignoring his orders and launching a nuclear missile at the US. You can't tell me Shepard had that much foresight that he could predict Price was going to do that. That gets way into precognition territory, and Shepard is not a fucking psychic. And again, with Shepard's plan being all over the place, the entire thing comes unraveled when he fails to kill Price and Soap, which, how did he fail that in the first place. 
His betrayal takes Roach completely by surprise because there was no reason for Roach to suspect that at all. But he just decided to have all his men attack Price and Soap outright without trapping them first to guarantee they wouldn't be able to escape. I guess that makes sense if we're going with the angle that Shepard's an arrogant dumbass. And then why did Shepard betray Task Force 141 then? They have no idea of Shepard's involvement with starting World War III. It's actually likely they never would have found out. And they were already being very effective at tracking down Makarov and his base of operations. Seems like Shepard could have waited until after they got rid of Makarov, or even never tried to kill him at all, and then just let them have some of the glory too, because it's not like it would have negatively affected him, right? Or is he that much of an arrogant dumbass that he just had to get rid of them before his plan to kill Makarov had come together? This bit was just going to be a short little thing, but I guess I had a little more to talk about than I initially thought. Where were we? Oh yeah, don't drop and Bob Barker's game show get into a fight with a specific sheep man and we exploit his weakness for small knives by turning him into a pirate. And then we bleed out and die because pulling a knife out of your ribcage is actually really bad for you if you want to keep your blood where it belongs. Except Price wakes up so we get over our blood loss and mortal wound in order to hobble over to our Uber and leave. Also, we specifically told our Uber driver not to pick us up and he did it anyways, so I'm giving him two stars. Game over. Special thanks to my patrons whose continued support makes these videos possible. If you want to support the channel as well, patrons get a special avatar that goes at the end of the videos they help support, as well as early access to videos and full res artwork from thumbnails.